In 1992, Thomas Gold, an astrophysicist and NAS member, published a paper in PNAS entitled The Deep Hot Biosphere, in which he posited the existence of abundant microbial life deep within the Earth's crust. This paper inspired subsequent research in a wide variety of scientific fields, from geochemistry to microbiology, which has supported many of Gold's predictions. In honor of the 25th anniversary of the publication of Gold's original manuscript, John Speer, an environmental microbiologist at the Colorado School of Mines, and his colleagues published a retrospective in PNAS summarizing what we've learned about the deep hot biosphere and what we have yet to learn. I spoke with Speer about Thomas Gold and the deep hot biosphere. What is the deep hot biosphere? The deep hot biosphere is a place where the Earth's crust is warm and hot. And that allows for the interaction of warm to hot fluids with rocks. If those rocks contain metals like iron, water plus iron in the right kind of rock can produce molecular hydrogen as a byproduct. It's called serpentinization. And serpentinization reactions are now shown to happen in lots of places. Lots of microbes in the subsurface can live on that hydrogen byproduct. If there was a carbon source on the subsurface as well, like CO2, maybe it's supporting life completely disconnected from surface life, which is photosynthetically driven. So you could have a subsurface biosphere that's chemosynthetic. It's making and reproducing itself by chemical reactions rather than using light. Who was Thomas Gold? Thomas Gold was a very interesting character. He did not have a PhD, but he thought a lot about science enough such that he was in many scientific organizations. He was a fellow of the Royal Society. He was well awarded in science for his ideas. He was primarily an astrophysicist, but he typically thought outside of his own field. If he felt that he could make a bang in another field with a thought that he had, he wasn't shy about saying that. We found that his work on the deep hot biosphere impacted something along the lines of 20 different fields of science, everything from engineering to, to microbiology, what evidence do we have for the existence of the deep hot biosphere? We now know that there are water rock reactions happening in just about any subsurface environment. Are they productive reactions that produce things like molecular hydrogen? That happens in a subset of those environments. And we've now shown this in all kinds of places. It's been studied in South African gold mines and a mine here in Colorado in Canadian mines. It's kind of like the earth as a pin cushion and we're planting pins into the cushion in the form of drill holes and mines that become accessible ports to better understand life to a depth. And that's where we're finding microbes today that have since followed up on his idea. Life has been found to a depth of at least 10 kilometers in the Earth's crust so far and likely extends further down than that. What kinds of organisms inhabit the deep hot biosphere? We see a lot of bacteria and archaea, two of the three domains of life. A lot of things are anaerobes, living without oxygen or low oxygen, and it's mostly things that like to metabolize basic compounds like hydrogen, combining that with CO2 to make biomass. We see that in subsurface environments, there is a greater abundance of hydrogenase genes than there are in surface environments. And hydrogenase genes are the enzymes that are needed by cells to metabolize hydrogen. We didn't expect to see that kind of difference between a surface environment and a subsurface environment, but it was really an interesting finding. Are there any aspects of Gold's original hypothesis that are not consistent with what we now know? He posited this idea that oil came from reactions that are happening in the deep subsurface of the Earth, and we have this endless supply of oil by his thinking. That was a controversial aspect of his deep hot biosphere paper 25 years ago that has now pretty much since been disproven. Why is the deep hot biosphere relevant for so many scientific fields? If life is endemic in the subsurface environment, it could be that it is maintaining some sort of a subsurface function that we don't understand, which then has some effect on surface life. Maybe life started in the subsurface and crawled out its way towards the surface. Geologically, we think about ore deposits on Earth. One, for example, would be uranium. It could be, perhaps, that sulfate-reducing bacteria precipitated uranium as the mineral uraninite on the outside of their own cells. That also has relevance to astrobiology, because biological molecules can be difficult to preserve across time, but minerals can be in the rock record. And so you could say, well, with a certain mineral composition, that could have had a biological component. 